think and grow rich. So this book isn't one of those get rich quick formula things. This book has its place in history and it has actually changed the lives of thousands and thousands of people all over the world. The funny thing about this book is that it doesn't actually talk about making money. What it talks about instead is the mindset, the philosophy and principles of wealth creation. The book is a great introduction to financial education and it's basically a guide to living a better life. It's one of the most influential books of all times when it comes to achieving financial independence and self-development. That's why everyone recommends this book for success. And here's the thing. This isn't a book that you read like a novel. This is a book that you need to actually use. It is basically like a manual. And here's the thing. I don't care if you don't like reading. It's not about what you like doing. It's about what you have to do in order to grow. And if you really, really hate reading, you can always look for the audiobook. I want you to actually get the most out of this book. So in today's video, I will give you the summary and the most important takeaways from Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, written in 1937. Principle number one, you are responsible for your own destiny. One of the most important ideas shared by Napoleon Hill in his book is the fact that the only person responsible for whatever happens in your life has to be you and you only. Here's the thing, in life you have two choices. One, you can blame everyone else for what happens and make excuses for why you're not doing what you know you're supposed to in order to succeed. Two, take responsibility for everything and actually work to change. Taking responsibility is so important and here's why. It gives you power. Think about it in this way. When you take responsibility for everything in your life, it means that you are the one that generated every outcome. At that point, you have the power to stop generating those outcomes by changing your behavior. Make sense? Good, next one. Principle number two, failure is no more than a lesson. Have you ever failed at something? Yeah, we all have. Think about when you were just a little kid and you were learning how to ride your bicycle. Your parents probably helped you out a little, but still, you had to learn it all by yourself. You probably fell multiple times, stopped, and then picked yourself up and tried again and again until you made it. Every time you failed, you didn't stay down, you didn't complain, you just got back up and tried again. When it comes to any form of failure, this is exactly the same attitude you should have to. Dust yourself off and get back at it. Failure is no more than a sign. Not a sign that you're stupid, it's a sign that you're doing something stupid. Let's say, for example, that maybe you're developing a skill, such as closing over the phone. You're selling high ticket items to prospects over the phone, and you're doing your best to get better at it. One of the prospects completely rejects you, and every objection he throws at you catches you completely off guard. Obviously, this hurts, but you shouldn't let it affect you. Remember the bicycle example? Well, this is exactly the same thing. It only means that you need to improve your skills. Evaluate what went wrong. What did you tell them that turned them off? Maybe you told them that you don't like fedora hats and they were wearing one while speaking to you. The takeaway here is don't repeat the same mistakes. Study your past failures because failure always teaches you something. And if you are smart, you'll pick up the lesson and not repeat it. Principle number three, you need a vision. Otherwise, where are you even going? Imagine this. You're hanging out with a couple of friends and one of them tells you to go. He doesn't tell you anything else. Just go. You don't know where. So you begin walking randomly, directionless, kind of confused and with no real purpose. See how overall this is a bad idea? How are you supposed to get better in life if you don't even know where you're going or what you're living for? It is up to you to decide what's your purpose, mission and direction. Maybe it's financial freedom. Maybe you want to change the world and stop global warming. Or maybe you just want to help your community, your church or make your family proud. Whatever that vision looks like, you absolutely 100% need to know what it looks like in as much detail as you can, because clarity is the key to knowing where you're going. So back to the friend situation, let's pretend that now he tells you to go to the main plaza of the city and to look for the cinema. You go there and you start looking and you look, but you just can't find it. You see, you can't find something if you don't know what it looks like. Your friend needs to describe to you everything about that cinema the colors, the height, the position, the entrance, and literally everything in as much detail as he can. As soon as he does, he'll give you all the necessary data for you to look for it, recognize it, and reach it. This is why you need to have clarity. And when you set goals, please keep this in mind. Otherwise, you seriously risk going nowhere and just wasting time. Principle number four, create urgency. Here's how we're going to define urgency from now on. Urgency indicates how strong your desire for obtaining something in a short period of time is. If you have a lot of urgency for an apple, you want to eat right now, and you want it so bad that you're willing to give everything up to find an apple and eat it. 
This is the kind of urgency, or let's call it hunger that I'm talking about. You have to be hungry and have a lot of urgency to reach your short-term and long-term goals. If you have urgency, you stop procrastinating. You stop waiting for the right time. From now on, you're forbidden from saying, I will wait until the time is right, or I'll do it tomorrow, next week, or next month. Don't postpone what you can do now, just do it. The right time will never come, and here's why. Your brain wants to protect you from everything that requires effort and is even remotely close to being painful. Since we live in a developed society, we can live without lifting a finger for long periods of time. So we get used to being 100% comfortable all the time. In order to achieve success, you need to detach yourself from your comfort zone and do what you need to do when you need to do it. You should ignore the part of your brain that often doesn't want to do anything because it does not understand the importance of long-term comfort over short-term comfort. So here's how you can create urgency. Set deadlines. Do you remember when you were in high school? If you were like me, you hated studying and you'd always postpone it until the very last day and the night before your very important exam. Don't judge me. So you start studying so hard that you learn more in one night than in one whole month. When you're under pressure and the deadline feels stressing and close, you're much more productive. So set a deadline to your goals and let the deadline stress you out so much that you just have to work on your goal. Here's an additional tip for this to work even better. Create annoying consequences if you don't meet a deadline. Make a bet with some friends or maybe hold yourself accountable by punishing yourself. Maybe take away your Netflix subscription or give some money to someone you hate or something that really annoys you. Principle number five, after defeat, there's success. Napoleon Hill, the author of the book we're talking about, has interviewed numerous successful people from the US, and he took the information and summarized it in the book, Think and Grow Rich. Most of these successful men and women told Napoleon Hill that often, success comes right after you're about to give up. This means that right when things are the hardest, when they're so hard that you are about to give up, right after that, there's success. The greatest success comes right after your last breath. You need to keep going, never give up, and keep your head up while fighting. I know that success isn't easy, I 100% agree with that, but that's not a good excuse for not making more money, achieving more, and making your life better. In conclusion, these are, in my opinion, the most important takeaways from the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. This book just doesn't die, its principles and lessons are still relevant today. In order to generate wealth and get ahead in life, all you need to do is do certain things very well in a certain way. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.